Good evening. Welcome to today's Kingdom Conversation. I'm certainly blessed to have opportunity to come and connect with each of you again on this day. It's been a moment since we had our conversation. Um, and today we want to touch on some subject matters that have been brought to our attention from those of you in our listening audience. And I uh, hope that you will enjoy this week's uh, conversation and thank you for contributing to the conversation. Feel free to leave your comments or contact us for questions or uh, comments about anything that you hear on the uh, this broadcast today. Today let's talk about living in the new world economy. Living in the new world economy. And by that I mean the economic systems are changing at a rapid pace in our society today, especially with the use of the internet, information technology, artificial intelligence, and robotics, and all the different ways that technology is, is surpassing, in some cases, even human understanding and knowledge. And so how are we preparing ourselves for what I call the new the new economy. And of course, I always have promoted the fact that we need to have financial leveraging, so to speak, by pooling resources together. It's a it's a hard sell to many people who are raised and indoctrinated with an independent mindset. And by the time most people realize that, hey, I wish I was a part of a group, a network, or a village of people, like-minded people who are freely willing to share resources and build things together. So maybe this will be a wake-up call for some, someone who's listening today. Maybe it'll just be a confirmation for some who've already been sensing the need to do this, and the, the need has been there for quite a while, but it's never too late to get started. Today is a great day to get started um, on whatever plan you've been sensing within yourself, and anything I can do to help move you on that process, definitely feel free to reach out to me. So one of the things I've been promoting over the last four or five years very strongly is land ownership, owning land making sure that you have a space that can be yours, that you can relatively control to do what it is you feel you need to do for yourself and or your family or those in your circle. I've shared information in previous videos about some of the resources and uh, that I've used to be able to acquire property um, and then to be able to build a sustainable village and housing and places to grow food and and for safety and, and just for shelter it's very important it's always been important but it's going to be even much more important in the upcoming days weeks months and years so if you've been hesitating if you've been delaying or procrastinating about uh taking the step to do these things go ahead and um Make up your mind to do it. It is not as difficult as some of you may think it is. Uh, it'd be great if you had resources set aside to be able to just uh, go ahead and get started on this process. And I'll be more than happy to give you the information that I have that can help you to do so. Uh, so with, even outside of that, I was looking at a video of an a, a older couple, maybe 60-somethings, and they moved to Africa uh, one of the one of the countries in Africa, I believe, the Gambia, and they purchased a lot of land and they were building a compound there and started some agricultural businesses. And they were talking about the fact that their children, who were raised in America, uh, certainly uh, did not really buy into the whole idea that their parents had, and and that's common in a lot of cases. Sometimes we will realize if you have children that whatever you value, they may not necessarily value the things that you value. Though you try to share the vision with them, uh, hopefully they'll be able to understand that at least somewhere you have something instead of having to spend all of your life working for something. 
and uh, I can relate to that. But you can't make people grab your vision. It has to be something that's in them to really help them to see it. But you still put the information out before uh, those who can grasp it and, and try to mentor them. Of course, they have the right and they probably will have the will to put their own spin on things, to do things their way. They don't necessarily have to follow your specific pattern, but someone at least needs to get the ball started, okay? And then pass the baton on to the next generation, um, and hopefully they can improve upon the vision, the original vision. I think about the children of Israel in the Bible, when Moses was commanded uh, by God to go to the Pharaoh, to command that he let his people go, and we know the story of them wandering in the wilderness, and the the wandering ended up being 40 years, and then by the time that wandering was about to end, God called Moses to the mountain, told him to look everywhere he sees is the land that he had promised him 40 years ago that he would give to the children of Israel. And at that time, Moses were not a, did not enter into the promised land, but God had him prepare a Joshua, a Joshua who would take the people into the promise that God had made to Moses 40 years ago. Some of the land that they had wandered around was going to be the actual land they owned. And some generations don't get it, but somebody has to, I pray that perhaps you are one of the persons who have already grabbed the vision of God and you've already put some things in place that that can be usable for the right-hearted, the right-minded type of person or persons. I know myself, I I look, I I purposefully seek God for those with a Joshua spirit from wherever they are around the world. You may be in a foreign nation outside of America, but you may find yourself in America. uh, I, I, wherever God leads you from, it doesn't matter. God has a kingdom that's larger than anything that we can understand with our concept of kingdoms. And so I want to do my part, and I pray there are others who are listening from various generations who want to do their part to be able to move the needle forward, as some people say, or to pay it forward or to plant the seed of the tree and let someone else harvest the fruit from the tree once it matures. So it's a process to things. Most things just don't happen instantaneously. There has to be some level of preparation that takes place in order for something else to take place later on. And so for those of you who may be in a younger generation, I particularly try to target each a generation. I kind of look at a generation between like every 10 or 20 years or so. So if there's anyone in their um, 30s that, that, that are, have ears to hear and say, hey, I would love to grab a hold of a, a vision similar to be able to take something that someone has already planted the seed in and learn how to nurture it to maturity and to continue to bear fruit that would then provide more seed to be planted for the next generation behind me. If that's something that speaks to some of you in the audience, I would love to hear from you, uh, wherever you are around the world. Uh, God is uh, really prompting and pushing this by the Holy Spirit as a sense of urgency, so to speak, so that we can help to as deliver some people from their bondages that they've been in for so long in this life and and that they can begin to experience possessing the promises even in the earth that that God has made possible to us through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so let's everybody will not grab a hold of us. Everybody's not intended to. For, but for those who are, I say to you, step forward. Make yourself known, and let's learn how we can work together and connect. Uh, we recently finished up some new improvements to our property, uh, one of our properties in Georgia, and we're looking in Florida and South Carolina 
Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and Tennessee. So it may be someone in the listening audience or others who already have property or land uh, or, or other, other types of properties that can be utilized to help plant new seeds in new places for the future harvest of the generations who will be better prepared or at least get equipped for whatever the future may bring. So today we're talking about the new economy um, to make preparation uh, for whatever the future may bring. It's better to be prepared, saints of God, than not prepared. And so even in other nations, um, God can do the same type of movement as long as we're working with people with integrity and good character, the Holy Spirit can work through us to do uh, massive um, works in this earth. Massive works that will not only transform our current generation lives, but it will be the foundation for transformation for many generations to come uh, as the Lord will. So, may the seed of conversation today be something that will spur interest in you um, maybe it be something that the Holy Spirit of God or you may have been thinking about previously but you just say hey I wish I knew some people who had similar type of thinking or similar type of thoughts well today's your your day uh, certainly uh, I pray for God to send those with like-mindedness uh, for the connections to take place that the work can continue to grow and expand. So if anybody in the listening audience, if you're here in America, that's great. If you're from other nations, you may end up coming through America. Uh, if you're in other countries, then, then you feel like this may be something that you can grab a hold of to implement in your local community, wherever you are around the world. Reach out to me, and let's see how the Lord leads us. Uh, but for those of you who may have access to America, we're, uh, one of our main properties right now is in uh, southeastern Georgia. Feel free to reach out to me or have people that may already be in America. Uh, we have accommodations to accommodate you to come out and we can talk and connect and fellowship, spend time together, sharing each other's um, insight with each other, imparting vision into each other, uh, mentoring the next generation or even equipping the current generation because no one of us can do the work that God has for us to do. The work is larger than any one individual, or any one organization. So God has prepped those, I believe, that he's already prepped the hearts of those that he is going to call forward to step into the next phase of being the point of the spear, so to speak, to being the foundation for something that can be built upon later. I think about another example that I give you is in the Old Testament when David had desired to build a temple for God, but God wouldn't allow him to do it. But what David did was prepare supplies for the future for whoever would get a chance to build the temple, and it ended up being Solomon. So David had already made provisions and preparations and got, gathered supplies and things that would be needed for the building. And then Solomon completed the temple. So likewise today, God is still in the business of using one person to connect the next persons to the vision that God has for future generations. And this is what I want to see happen uh, for those of you in the listening audience today, as we talk about being a part of this new economy, or this new system, this new world system, that we, as children of God and followers of Christ, that we will be part of the solution and not a part of the problem. So let's pray and ask God to lead and guide us in the direction that he wants us to go. Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity that you've given us to plant a seed of information into the hearing of the listeners today. May you use the seeds that have been planted. <laughs> May you water them. May you manifest fruit into the lives 
of those that you have called to respond to your to your voice. Even now, even now, may your spirit fall afresh, igniting a fire, igniting a passion in each one, each one who's listening to the sound of my voice, even now, in Jesus' matchless name. May it be so, as we are prepared to lead in this new world economy. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Amen. You've been listening to Kingdom Conversations with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned into today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.